Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to make a quick and easy card using one of the stamp sets and the stencil I designed for the September Not Too Shabby kit. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. For one of my Shop Your Stash September series challenge videos, whew, that was a mouthful, I created a card with just some quick, easy stenciling and some stamping. I will pop it up on screen now, and I will link the original video where you can see the process in that description box below. Well, I absolutely fell in love with that card, so I thought it would be fun to try it with some other products just to see the difference. So today I'm going to be using the Autumn Vibes stamp set and the Knit Diamonds background stencil from the latest Not Too Shabby kit. Now unfortunately the kit and this stamp set are sold out. and Last I checked there were still two of my stencils left. But I will check again and put up on screen how many are left if you want to go over and grab this for yourself. If you have been enjoying these videos using the Not Too Shabby kits, there is a new one coming out in just a few days. So I will link the subscription page in that description box below and you can go ahead and get signed up so that you're guaranteed to have a kit. And let me tell you, I know I say it every month, but this new one is super fun and I know that you're going to love it. As I start the process, I will tell you about more products and tools that I add, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get started, I do have a couple special announcements. The first is I would love to welcome my newest paper trimmer level member, Jasmina B. Thank you so much for your support. If you're interested in finding out more about the Perks of Channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. The second thing is, Jamie from Not Too Shabby just shared some sneak peeks and information about the upcoming hop for the new kit. Up here on screen are a couple peeks at that. And then here also is the information about the hop, which there is a giveaway and it starts on the first. Now back to your regularly scheduled video. Off screen, I cut and folded a top fold dark brown card base, and then I cut two pieces of off white that are four by five and a quarter. One will go on the front, and one will go on the inside for the message. And then I got a couple scraps out for the sentiment an off white, and then a brown to mat it. Now, I've never blended on off white before, but hey, we'll see how it works out. So the ink has a little extra time to dry, I'm going to start by stamping my background piece. I chose the two leaves, the acorn, and that little piece of wheat from the stamp set, and I did go ahead and pre-set that up on my block. To stick with the fall color palette that I will later be blending in, I will be inking this up and stamping it in a chocolate brown ink. What I do is just repeat stamp this across the background of my piece of cardstock, making sure that some of the images hang off the edge just to make it more like I've cut down a piece that was already pre-made. I kind of twist them sometimes and turn them around or turn the piece that I'm stamping to get nice coverage and at the end I fill in any gaps I need to on the edges. Once that was all stamped, I set it to the side to allow the ink a little extra dry time. And then I moved on to the rest of the stamping on the card. Now on this next piece, which will go on the inside for my personal message, I inked up the same images and I stamped it off once before bringing it to the cardstock. This will add just a little bit of decoration to the inside. 
The first piece that I ended up stamping the sentiment, I tried to do the same thing with the four images, but I didn't like the way the sentiment looked with that background. So I did go with plan B, and that was just to ink up only the acorn, stamp it off, and then to stamp it onto a different scrap of that off-white cardstock. Then I brought in my sentiment at full strength and stamped it so it was a little bit to the right of the acorn. And I liked this one much better. And now it's time to do the ink blending. I chose three fall colors from my stash and I did actually hit this background just a little bit with my heat tool to make sure it was dry. I didn't want to do the ink blending and have those images run. I will be starting with kind of the yellowish orange color and I did a slight diagonal and started in the center. You'll notice I did rotate it and come in from both edges and once I had that first color done I just came in and did the remaining two colors. And here's a look at that first layer of color on the background. Once that first layer of color was down, I brought in my stencil and I held it in place with a couple pieces of painter's tape and I did the same exact ink blending on the same sections. But you'll notice later when I do the reveal that these pieces now just turn out a little darker and I love the effect. While I work on that second layer of color, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. If you're new to my channel, these are just questions I like to ask every once in a while so we can get to know each other. Today's question is actually from a channel member. That is one of the perks of channel membership. And Karen C and I would like to know, what is more common for you? making a single card or multiples. You can let us know in that comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so we know you've answered and would like us to see it. For myself, if you found my channel through Sheetload of Cards, you know that I love to make multiples and that is what I do most of the time. But I will tell you that I've really enjoyed lately making single cards and just trying to make them each a little extra special. Sometimes on Sundays, my mom, my sister, and I get together for a little Zoom crafty session where we just make single cards together. And then sometimes I just come down here and play for fun. I can't wait to hear about you. Once that piece was ink blended, I set it off to the side to dry a little bit and I brought in my small photo trimmer and I cut down my sentiment piece. I just tried to use the metal line on the trimmer and line that up before I made each cut. Then I added adhesive to the back of that and I trimmed it down to an even brown border around the sentiment. Now that all of the pieces are ready, I can put the card together. I adhered the cardstock for the personal message to the inside and then I adhered the ink blended panel on the front. Now since this card is pretty flat so far, I did want to pop up my sentiment so I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the 3 quarters inch width and put a couple pieces of that on the back before placing it on the card. You'll see here that I did play around just a little bit with where I wanted the sentiment to go, but eventually I found the correct place for me and pressed that down. Now to add a little bit of bling, I brought in my glittery sequins and I placed five glue dots on my card where I wanted them to go and then I used my jewel picker to put those in place. I love the color of these and that there's a little bit of glitter but it won't fall off. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.